everyone. I'm Melissa Porter with the uh, Mining Journal, and I'd like to introduce Lisa Hickey, um, Michelin Mining Businesses Segment Manager of Sustainability, and Virgil Eglon, Michelin Mining's Research and Development Sustainability Leader. I just have some questions today. Lisa, um, what is the most compelling ESG investment case when it comes to mining tires, and if you could focus on the social and the governance part of ESG specifically. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you for the question, and it's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to be with you today. So I'll begin by looking at um, Group Michelin overall, because you asked the question as it relates to tires, and I will say that Group Michelin is a socially responsible company. And we're no different in the mining portion of Group Michelin. We work really hard to be part of the conversation around a more sustainable future for mining. Uh, we work very closely in collaboration with our customers. We also align extremely well with organizations like ICMM, which is the International Council on Mining and Metals. And in addition to that, we have articulated a, a rather significant ambition to help to lead the transformation of mining to a more sustainable future by fostering collaboration with and around and across our customers. So it's extremely important for us to advance in this regard. And while we're doing this and looking at this, while we're striving to make our tires as sustainable as possible, and certainly we'll delve into that in more detail in the context of the interview, while we're looking to provide tangible benefits to our customers um, that result in innovation with strong research and development, we're also trying very hard to think more broadly than tires. We're actually looking at the overall value that we can potentially bring to our customers as a partner in helping them to achieve their sustainability ambitions because we have articulated ambitions, our customers have articulated ambitions, the world needs a transition to a cleaner planet. We feel that this is something we can deliver together and we can actually go further to deliver that going beyond tires. So thank you for the question. Thanks, Lisa, that's really clear. Uh, tangible results, broader thinking. Um, I'm going to move on to question two. This is about the life cycle assessment that you've used. Why has Michelin Mining chose this approach to measure the environmental impacts of your mining tires? Thank you, Melissa, for the question. Uh, really glad to be here, just like Lisa. So just like Lisa said before, right, uh, Michelin is really, uh, the, the, you know, sustainability is at the core of Michelin. And this is one of our founding uh, core value. Uh, which is around respect, right? So in our quality statement, you know, we have respect for the clients, for people, shareholders, the environment, and for fact. And so this value of respect really feeds our strategic human and social model. So if you think about that life cycle assessment, which is, you know, scientific methods, so, you know, respect for the fact and the environment feeds right with that. Um, so first of all, you know, life cycle assessment is it's a standardized method, right? It's based on ISO 14040-44. And it's, it's an approach that was initiated in the 70s, developed through the 90s, and now it's spread worldwide, you know, since the 2000s. Um, so that approach for us, it's really at the heart of Michelin Sustainable Approach. And we use that tool as a way to analyze the environmental impact that are accumulated throughout the product's life from raw material extraction all the way to the end of life treatment. And so the, the way that the, the tool is being used at Michelin is that it helps us to gain insight that drive advancement in our product design and that are here to improve the environmental impact without compromising performance. Um, and what I'm, I'm glad to say is that, you know, since 2023, we have 100% of our product that are launched that must have an improved LCA score. And then by 2025, we're going to add services to that. So basically, 2025, all our products and services will have a, a net positive impact on the environment. And there's really, so there's four benefits to the LCA. For one, uh, it it's really... Um, covering all the environmental impact. So it's, it's really this holistic tool that includes all potential environmental impact. You know, so in the LCA, for example, we have 16 parameters, not just climate change, but you know, we look at ozone depletion, uh, depletion acidification, uh, land use, and so on. So it, it's really a, 
a comprehensive way to look at the environmental impact. Secondly, uh, the most important is that we use that tool to really understand and take a deep dive in the decision and the impact on the environment and then to prioritize our solution. So we want to leverage what are the most efficient solution at reducing the impact on the environment. Third, uh, the this is an important part of LCA, is we want, to we want to avoid what we call impact transfers, right? So for example, you may, you may have like a false good idea. You're like, oh, I can do this and reduce my rental impact, but then you might transfer it to a different stage of the life cycle, or maybe you might in increase the environmental impact on another parameter. So that's why we use these tools so that we can have the big picture and we can see globally what's going on. And then fourth, uh, and that's a very important point. We want to use this, again, we have respect for the fact. And so we're using LCA to communicate effectively around environmental impact without greenwashing. In terms of your LCA findings, you mentioned not compromising on performance. Um, how have your findings led to advancements in your mining tire designs without compromising on the performance? Basically, what, what you, you have to, you know, the big picture is when tires, you know, they have a big impact uh, on the fuel emission, right, and the fuel efficiency of the vehicle. And so one key parameter that goes into the LCA is about the rolling resistance. Uh, rolling resistance, so what is it? It's, it's essentially um, a measurement of the energy efficiency. So if you would, it's, it's like thinking of what's the effort that's being put to um, to move the vehicle forward and, and make the, the tire roll, right? But in a mine, we not only uh, are rolling on a like road-like surface, but we also have you know soft, non-paved surface. And so, in addition to that rolling resistance that we see, you know, for example, in passenger car or truck, uh, we also have uh, more globally a motion resistance that is linked to the the interaction between the tire and the road. Um, so energy efficiency is really key uh, in, in maximizing the impact on LCA, uh, as well as, you know, the proper use of uh, mining tires. And that's really the, the greatest opportunity to reducing the environmental impact in the mine and helping the mine reduce cost and emission. Uh, just like, you know, we've done in, uh, you know, some of the publication, for example, on the, the LCA that we've conducted at uh, mines in, in Chile. Um, and so what, what we did is when we collected all the inputs and outputs and we calculated the impact on the environment at each stage of the life, what we discovered is that 70 to 90 percent of the environmental impact of the mining tires is occurring during the use phase. And so it's that part of where basically uh, all the energy efficiency of the tire is directly impacting the, the amount of um, emission that the vehicle is making. And so what, what we've done is essentially, we've managed to improve the energy efficiency of our product without reducing uh, their life. And so what happens is, you know, energy efficient tires uh, allows you to reduce the fuel consumption. And, and so that directly equates to a reduction in CO2 and the other uh, air pollutant like uh, nitrous oxide or sulfur oxide, right? Um, if you think of uh, like a large open pit copper mine, like we have typically in Chile, um, the mine consumes roughly around 200,000 liters of fuel per day, right? That's, that's huge. So any improvement that you do in fuel efficiency that then will lead to um, you know, this, this reduction in fuel consumption. Like imagine you, know, you could reduce fuel consumption by let's say 5%. I mean, 5% of 200,000 liters, I mean, that, that's huge. Um, and so uh, that, that's gonna be direct saving in terms of uh, the cost for the mine, but also lower emission, lower pollution. Uh, and then lastly, you know, we're also thinking about the transition, right? So we know that there's a transition to more, uh, you know, uh, zero emission type vehicle. And so when you lower motion resistance, you also help uh, the, the range of the vehicle. So for example, electric vehicles, and, and then you improve also productivity because you have less ideal time to charge the, the vehicle. And so that's, that's a big part of the transition.
can't thank you both enough for meeting with us today. We hope to have you back on Mining Journal with us soon. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, All Melissa. Thank you, Melissa.